The president said, suppose I do this, suppose I replace him, him, Jeff Rosen, with him, Jeff Clark. What do you do? It's just extraordinary. Wow. Uh, you know, Willie, um, there are moments in which um, the future of countries turn, and you listen to this hearing, you get the setting of this meeting, and, and this was one of those moments, this was one of those historical uh, hinges where history actually turned. If you had had different men, different women inside of that room. Weaker yep. As people. As uh, George Conway uh, 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 said yesterday, uh, for whatever problems we all may have, uh, anybody may have with pe people that Trump's lawyers uh, over the four years, uh, this country uh, is, should be very grateful that there were more Donahues uh, than there were Giuliani's, that there were, were more Hirschmans uh, than there were Clarks. And, and I, I must say, I, again, it's not being melodramatic. You, you had a president who tried to encourage a mob to kill his vice president. Um, this, was, this was a moment where you had Americans uh, stand up and put the future, uh, patriotic Americans, put the future of the country over their political party. And that, uh, as Robert Frost once wrote, it's made all the difference. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, and, and remember, Jeffrey Rosen was the pick after Bill Barr. In other words, Donald Trump yeah. thought he was installing one of his guys with Jeffrey Rosen and that Richard Donahue would help him along in, as he pursued these these conspiracy theories and these claims of a, uh, an election that had been stolen from him, none of which were true, as both Rosen and Donahue laid out in great detail yesterday, and we'll play some of that, how they just shot down every theory that Donald Trump had about this. But you're right. Those were guys Donald Trump thought he could count on to help him pull off this coup against the United States government, and they wouldn't do it. And that's why Jeffrey Clark comes onto the scene, because now Donald Trump thinks, okay, let me take this guy, this nobody, this environmental lawyer who's willing to play my game, and I'll put him right. in power. Thank God he didn't do it. Let's bring into the conversation former U.S. attorney and senior FBI official Chuck Rosenberg, White House editor for Politico, mm -hmm. Sam Stein, and founder of the conservative website, The Bulwark. Charlie Sykes. Good morning to you all. Chuck, I'll start with you. Just your impressions of, of what you heard. Uh, we knew a lot of this from media reporting. We'd seen some of the depositions. We sort of knew what was coming, but to hear it chapter and verse from the mouths of Jeffrey Clark and Richard Donahue was extraordinary. Oh, uh, you're right, Willie. We did know a lot of it. And again, seeing it and hearing it, it makes it more palpable. Uh, that said, I grew up in the Department of Justice, so I have some views on what happened. Like you, I'm glad that Richard Donahue and Steve Engel and uh, Jeffrey Rosen were there. But in the Justice Department, and this may sound corny, but I believe it, so here it goes. Mm -hmm. Your job is to do the right thing in the right way for the right reason. And so that means doing the right thing even when it's hard, even when it means standing up to a president of the United States. Like you, I'm really glad those guys were in that room at that moment. Um, but that's what you're supposed to do. That's the job. And sometimes the job is saying no in a sea of yes. They were um, the right people at the right moment. But I'd like to think a lot of Justice Department people could do exactly what they did. Maybe I'm wrong about that. They deserve credit for being there. Um, but the job is to say no when you have to. And so I, I actually think, Willie, they would agree with me. I'm quite sure they wouldn't think of themselves as heroes. They would think of themselves as doing what Justice Department lawyers are trained to do. You know, um, one trip I took uh, when I was in Congress was was down to Peru uh, to see an American, uh, Lori Berenson, to see her uh, be tried. And after about three minutes, I was horrified by the proceedings uh, where you had one guy that seemed to be playing judge, jury and executioner. And I came back with such an understanding uh, of, of America's. Uh, third branch, uh, how extraordinarily important it was and how how it separated our country uh, from all the others. And Charlie Sykes, this is something you and I talked about um, about two months after Donald Trump got in the office. And, you know, Charlie uh, and I didn't talk. We were, it's very weird. But, you know, there are about 30 different factions in the conservative movement. And we were from like one of 30 different factions. But after Trump got elected, Charlie, we were talking, and I remember 
you telling me, um, you tell me, yeah, you were very distressed about what was going on, but you said the federal judiciary will hold the line. And I said, are you sure about that? You said, I'm sure about that, whether they're the most progressive federal judges or whether they're the most conservative Federalist Society appointees, they will all uphold the Constitution. And I don't know whether you believed it or not, but you made me believe it. And that's what we saw with the federal courts. That's what we saw with justice. And it just makes me it makes me proud to be an attorney, first of all, but also just makes me so proud to be an American because they held the line held. Yes, but it's a thin line and um, it's a thin you know, line. I, yeah. I, you know, as I as I listened yesterday, I kept thinking this was such a close run thing. Um, you know, that if you had different people in that room, would it have been different? You know, I mean, I hope that Chuck is right about this. But I look at Jeffrey Clark, you know, and, and I'm thinking, uh, you know, Jeffrey Clark is what Trump 2.0 will look like. You know, one of these mediocrities who is willing to pursue these, uh, you know, bizarre farcical fantasies. But, you know, uh, farcical fascism is still fascism. And what you saw yesterday was, was this, this play out of the president of the United States pushing these bizarre, insane conspiracy theories, these fantasies, but pushing every single lever to use and corrupt the Department of Justice. I mean, thank God that we had these individuals yeah. here, but keep in mind also this was 17 days before the term was over. Um, in Trump 2.0, you will have more Jeffrey Clarks in that room. You will be able to find people, I think, um, people who will be willing to do what they, the president wants. And now, of course, the president has figured out, you know, what he can do and what he can get away with. But it was an extraordinary moment. You know, and, and, and I was thinking about as you as you opened the show, you actually did have, I think, a smoking gun with the president basically saying, I don't care what's true. You just you just say it and, and leak it to me. You had this happen the same day that Jeffrey Clark's home is raided. We have a criminal investigation uh, by the Department of Justice, which will directly connect Donald Trump to this conspiracy. And you have, and I agree with uh, Eric Holder there, um, and, and then you also have uh, all of these congressmen who are asking for pardons, which would suggest that they also understood that they had criminal liability. So Joe, this was an extraordinary moment. And it is a flashback to Watergate. Uh, this was a pivotal moment. It was cinematic. I can't wait for the movie where they recreate that scene in the yeah, Oval Office perfect. because the drama was so high and the stakes were so high. And I'm sorry, I keep thinking, what if it had gone the other way? What if Jeffrey yeah. Clark had become the acting attorney general? What would have happened if that letter had been sent? What would we be talking about today? And I think we need to constantly remember that this line held, but it's a thin line. 